universe is a sphere encased by successive coverings of the elements earth, water, fire, air, ether, intelligence, and ego. As a coconut has its hard outer shell and inner liquid, so the universe has its outer coverings and an inner space half filled with ocean water. On that ocean, another Vishnu expansion reclined on a serpent bed while being massaged by his consort Lakshmi. From his navel arose a lotus on which Brahma was born. Initially, the universe was pitch dark and Brahma engaged in meditation. Then he was empowered to create the universe. This account of creation may appear fantastic to some, but modern scientific theories also require fantastic leaps of faith to explain the origin of the universe. Vedic cosmology explains that the universe is made up of 14 vertically arranged planetary systems or lokas. Each system resembles a galaxy and comprises stars, planets, and other celestial bodies. The topmost planetary system is Satyaloka, the abode of Brahma, which is at a height of 1.87 billion miles above Earth. Below the Satyaloka planetary system is the Tapaloka planetary system, the abode of the ascetics, which is at a height of nearly 1 billion miles above the Earth. Here, the ascetics live in a solitary, serene environment conducive for yoga and meditation on transcendence. Their disciplined life of joyous austerity prepares them for returning back to the non-material world. As we move down from Tapaloka, we pass through Maharloka and Janaloka until we reach the Svargaloka planetary system, also known as Heaven. And then from the center of the dome, a chandelier, uh, which shows the planets according to the Vedic version. This planet and his sister is rotating from his two heads, and it is hanging like the chandelier taking shelter of the pole star that we can see every night. That the pole star or the north star remains fixed and does not orbit in the sky is well known to astronomers and sailors alike. Less known is the fact that the pole star rotates powerfully on its own axis. The ancient Vedic text called Matsya Purana explains, The planets and stars are all attached to the pole star by invisible astral cords of wind called pravaha. The revolution of the pole star causes the orbital motion of other planets and stars. Through meditation, yogic astronomers visualize the planets and stars as different parts of the body of Shishumar, the transcendental dolphin. The Pole Star. The topmost of the heavenly planets is like the capital of the middle universe. Here, the third form of Vishnu resides on an ocean of milk. In times of universal disturbances, the demigods headed by Brahma come here to appeal for help. The Pole Star is also the abode of Dhruva, a pure and exalted devotee of the Lord. The Vedic geocentric model explains how the sun moves around the pole star situated vertically above Earth's north pole. As the sun goes around the Earth globe, we experience day and night. The stationary Earth, unlike the pole star, does not revolve on its own axis, though it is slightly tilted toward the pole star. During summer in the northern hemisphere, the north pole experiences six months of daylight. Conversely, during summer in the Southern Hemisphere, the South Pole experiences six months of daylight. 
These six-month periods correspond to a day and night for the demigods living in the heavenly planetary system. Vedic cosmology accounts for this phenomena by the vertical motion of the sun, technically called Uttarayana and Dakshinayana. The sun moves upward on an incline for half a year and then downward for the next half. This motion produces two effects on Earth, namely the changing of the seasons and the varying durations of day and night. Ordinary vision sees the sun to be a mere globe of fire. However, celestial vision reveals a personality residing over the sun. His name is Vivisvan and he rides on a golden chariot pulled by seven divine horses at a speed of 16,000 miles per second. The chariot has one wheel which moves on celestial Manasotara mountain. The horizontal shaft is linked to the axial hub of the universe, Mount Meru, and the diagonal shaft is linked to the pole star. With each circular path, the wheel gradually moves laterally inward for six months and then outward for six months. Similar to the chariot's vertical motion, this lateral action fine-tunes seasonal changes on Earth. When the orbital motion of the sun is viewed from above, its illumination is seen to extend out to half of the greater Earth plane. During its orbit, the sun passes over the four cities situated in the four cardinal directions. The city over which the sun is passing experiences moon, and the city in the opposite direction experiences midnight. The two other cities experience sunrise and sunset. Although Bumandala literally means the circle or mandala of the earth, it has little in common with the earth on which we stand. The diameter of Bumandala is given in the Bhagavatam, and it is about the size of the orbit of Uranus. Bumandala is divided into a series of geographic features called oceans and islands. But these are geometrically perfect rings of cosmic size with no resemblance to irregular earthly continents. In the center of Bumandala is the circular island of Jambudweep, with nine subdivisions called Varshas. These include Bharata Varsha, which can be understood in one sense as India, and in another as the total area inhabited by ordinary human beings. Jambudweep is centered on the geometrically shaped Sumeru Mountain, which represents the world axis and is surmounted by the city of Brahma, the universal creator. The Bhagavatam presents astronomy in geographical and mythological language, and the mode of presentation is different from the familiar modern approach. Although the earth disk of Bumandala may look naively unrealistic, careful study shows that the Bhagavatam uses it to represent at least four different reasonable and consistent models. Vishnu Purana also describes the Earth as Bharat Kanda and gives its diameter as 8,000 miles. The Earth is also referred to by the name Bharat Kanda in the invocation Sankalpa Mantra chanted by Brahmana priests since time immemorial up until the present day. Vedic cosmology gives descriptions of the entire cosmos, including its subtle features. Perception and access to these subtle features, however, requires karmic qualification. Consequently, much of the cosmos described earlier, as well as parts of the cosmography about to be described, are imperceptible and inaccessible to us earthly inhabitants. Bharat Kanda is one of the nine islands of the larger and originally bow-shaped Bharat Varsha, which was divided by the sons of Sagara. Being completely surrounded by water, the islands are mutually unreachable. In the Vedas, Bharat Kanda, our Earth, is also referred to by other names such as Sudarshan Dvip, Kumarika Dvip, and Navadvip, etc. Bharat 
Persia, the famous mountains known as the Himalayas are tall and immovable. Here we find an abode of Lord Shiva, the greatest of the demigods. In the center of Jambu Dweep stands the most extraordinary divine golden mountain called Meru. Meru is shaped like an inverted cone and it is the sporting place for the demigods. Around Meru are many supporting mountains called Kesara. Jambu Dweepa is 0.8 million miles in diameter and is surrounded by the saltwater ocean of the same width. On top of Mount Meru is a resort of Brahma called Manovati. The famous celestial river Ganges descends to the center of Manovati and then flows out into four directions. Surrounding Manovati in the eight directions are the resort cities of the chief demigods. One of these cities is Amaravati, the resort of Indra, king of heaven. King Indra lives here in majestic opulence, attended to by musicians, dancers, and reciters. The greater earthly planetary system extends out to the edges of the universe and has a diameter of four billion miles. Known as Bhumandala, shaped like a lotus flower, it has seven concentric islands and oceans with Mount Meru as its pericarp. The seven oceans respectively contain salt water, sugarcane juice, liquor, clarified butter, milk, emulsified yogurt, and sweet drinking water. Sometimes Vedic cosmology is misconstrued as portraying the earth to be a flat disk. This flat earth misconception arises partly due to our inability to understand Vedic nomenclature. A single object may be referred to by several names and a single name may refer to several objects. For example, the term Earth may be used to describe at least six different aspects of cosmology. The Earth we live on is indeed a globe as explained by the Sanskrit word Parimandale, meaning spherical, used in the Mahabharata text. The flat disk refers to the greater earthly planetary system of Bhumandala. Four elephants of inestimable size are placed at the four directions for balancing the greater earth. Below the earthly planetary system are seven subterranean realms named Atala, Vitala, Sutala, Talatala, Mahatala, Rasatala, and Patala, which do not receive sunlight and which are inhabited primarily by demoniac living entities. To reach the first one, one must go 80,000 miles downward through underground tunnels. At successive depths of 80,000 miles are the remaining six nether worlds, all of which are fully developed underground civilizations. In the fourth level downward, Talatala Loka, lives the magical architect Maya Danava, who has designed many brilliantly decorated cities where proud materialists reside. Below the nether worlds are the 28 hellish planetary systems. The demigod of justice, Yamaraj, judges the unrighteous human beings after their deaths and sends them to one of these planets. There, errant souls are administered appropriate punitive measures corresponding to their misdeeds. The earthly and subterranean planetary systems rest upon one of the hoods of the gigantic divine serpent, Shesha. Shesha in turn is held up by the colossal transcendental tortoise, Kurma. 
and Kurma resides in the ocean that fills half the universe. Shang, 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 Shang,